Welcome back to Mike's Monsters. While adventuring around New York City during recent work travels, I visited the Manhattan Kino Kunio location and stumbled upon a huge stock of D. Agostini Japan Toho Collection Scale Series and a ton of other great Godzilla products. I could have spent hundreds of dollars here in mere minutes, but I do have some restraint. This series promises to deliver over 60 different monster figures in 1 700th scale over time. That's 1 700th scale. And I repeat, that'll be over 60 iconic Toho monsters in incredibly detailed miniature form by the time these magazine issues are wrapped up. Before we get to unboxing Godzilla, Let's take a look through the magazine about the history of this incredible collection. It's all in Japanese, so I can't read or translate for you, but feel free to pause and read if you can. These figures are a perfect way to celebrate the rich history of Toho's monster universe. From the colossal Shin Godzilla to the mystifying Mothra larva and the destructive King Ghidorah, You'll likely find all of your favorites from all generations of Godzilla films in this collection. These figures bring a truly unique element to the table. They offer fans a rare opportunity to see the scale between these monsters as officially listed. It's a neat feature because the heights of these kaiju may sometimes not come across completely on screen. This collection, however, accurately portrays the size comparisons. For instance, you can see the contrast between Gigan officially listed at 65 meters, and Showa King Ghidorah, who stands at 100 meters. It effectively showcases the variations in size between different eras within the series, as shown by the towering figure of Final Wars Rodan in comparison to the other figures in this collection. Future figures in this collection include Mothra from 92, Angiris from 2004, Biolante's plant form, Kaiser Ghidorah, Gorosaurus, Gabara, Megalon, King Caesar from 74, Mecha King Ghidorah, Batra, Super Mecha Godzilla, Desa Troya, Manda, and Shin Godzilla's second form. So there's something to look forward to for fans of all eras. Some of the larger figures like King Ghidorah and Shin Godzilla come in multiple parts over several issues. So to complete them, you'll have to purchase multiple issues. The magazine goes over the process of making the figure as well as covering behind the scenes of the featured film with production stills, stories and reactions from the film's release. The figures are sculpted by Akira Abaraki, I may have pronounced that wrong, who's sculpted numerous kaiju over the last 30 years. His work faithfully reproduces the suits that appear in the movies in high detail at small scale. As many of you know, The Return of Godzilla was released in 1984 and is a direct sequel to 1954's Godzilla or Gojira. And the film marked the return to the franchise's darker, serious tone, ignoring the previous Showa films with a hard reset. In the United States, it was released in 1985 as Godzilla 1985, with added scenes and alterations to appeal to Western audiences and including additions of Raymond Burr as a character shown in the American Godzilla King of the Monsters from 1956. These changes aim to provide a more familiar narrative style, while the original Japanese version remained true to the film's somber themes and political commentary. The two versions are very different in tone, and some scenes play out entirely differently due to the script adjustments to the American dub. Now let's take a closer look at the Godzilla 1984 figure itself. It is beautifully detailed and faithfully represents the classic look of the Big G from Return of Godzilla or Godzilla 1985, depending on the version you're watching. The sculpt and paint application are quite nice for such a small scale figure. I'm really impressed that they got the likeness mostly down for the suit design. He's got that really angry look, those very evil eyes. He's one of my favorite suit designs, and they and really, really, really got him down pretty, pretty good.
Here's how it also scales along with a few of my other Godzilla 1984 figures from my collection. I set up a few scenes with him and my iPop design buildings to recreate the mood of the return of Godzilla slash Godzilla 1985 rampage in Tokyo. If you decide to collect these figures, there are plenty of creative ways to display them. An original display stage set will be sold separately if this is how you prefer to display them. Or if you're like me, just putting them on your shelf along with your other collectibles may be the way to do it. I'm putting him on my Return of Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Biolanti shelf, which I technically have two of. If you're as excited as I am about these figures, you can buy a subscription or back issues on the official Toho Monster Collection Series website. Please note that I'm not entirely sure about their shipping situation outside of Japan, so be sure to check the website for more details on international shipping. You can also check eBay as well. I've seen a few on there right after a quick search. I scored mine for about $20 at the Kino Kunia store in New York City. So if you have one of their stores near you, maybe you can check it out and they might have some. I hope you enjoyed learning about the Toho Monster Collection series as much as I did. These figures are a really great addition for any kaiju enthusiast. Do you have any of your own? And also, do you prefer the Return of Godzilla Japanese original cut or the 1985 international release? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more monster fun on Mike's Monsters. You can follow my art on Instagram for toy photography and film prop photography, and TikTok for fun videos here and there as well. Thank you so much for watching Mike's Monsters, and have a great rest of your day.